open our eyes that we may see to follow the Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello, everyone. Hi, Sharif Johnson Moore here, your hope builder, lifting you out of your sorrow by guiding you to see the Christ within through scripture and practical applications. It is time, it is time, it is time. It is time for daily devotional. Today, we are going to be reading Judges 12, 1 through 15. And the topic will be Japheta's Bow and Victory. Japheta's Bow and Victory. I want to say that it is a pleasure and an honor to bring you the word each and every morning for a daily devotional. Now come on, let's get busy. Judges 12, 1 through 15, speaks about Japheta's vow and victory. And it reads, And the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together, and went northward, and said unto Japheta, Wherefore passest thou over to fight against the children of Ammon. And didst not call us to go with thee. We 
will burn thine house upon thee with fire. And Jephthah said unto them, I and my people were at great strife with the children of Ammon. And when I called you, ye delivered me not out of their hands. And when I saw that ye delivered me not, I put my life in my hands and passed over against the children of Ammon. And the Lord delivered them into my hand. Wherefore then are ye come up unto me this day to fight against me? Then Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim. And the men of Gilead smote Ephraim, because they said, Ye Gileadites, Gileadites are fugitives of Ephraim. Among the Ephraimites, and among the Manassites. And the Gileadites took the passage of Jordan before the Ephraim, Ephraimites. And it was so that when those Ephraimites, which were escaped, said, Let me go over, that the men of Gilead said unto him, Art thou an Ephraimite? If he say nay. Then said they unto him, Say now, Shibboleth, Shibboleth. And he said, Shibboleth, for he could not frame to pronounce it right. Then they took him and slew him at the passages of Jordan, and there fell at that time of the Ephraimites, forty and two thousand. And Japheta judged Israel six years. Then died Japheta the Gileadite and was buried in one of the cities of Gilead. And after him, Ibzan Ibzan of Bethlehem judged Israel. And he had thirty sons and thirty daughters, whom he sent abroad, and took in thirty daughters from abroad for his sons, and he judged Israel seven years. Then died Ibzan, Ibzan, and was buried at Bethlehem. And after him, Elon, a Zebulonite, judged Israel, and he judged Israel ten years. And Elon, the Zebulonite, died and was buried in Al-Jalan, Al-Jalan, in the country of Zebulun. And after him, Abdon, the son of Hiliad, Hilio, a Pyrethonite, Pyrethonite, judge Israel. And he had forty sons and thirty nephews that rode on three score and ten as colts, and he judged Israel eight years. And Abdon, the son of Helia, the Pyrethonite, died and was buried in Pyrethon, in the land of Ephraim, in the mount of the Amalekites. I have just read to you. 
Judges 12, 1 through 15. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you to say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for opening our eyes this morning, allowing us to see, allowing us to hear, allowing us to walk and talk. And if we do not have these abilities, you have enhanced the other ones to work precisely for us. Lord, we thank you for the breath in our bodies and activity of our limbs. We are in our right minds, Lord, just for today, Lord. We say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us, all that you have done and all that you're going to do. Lord, we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask you to bless this word that we have read this morning and may we apply it to our lives for today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, now let's deep dive into this chapter of Judges 12 1 through 15. And it speaks about how Jephetta has went to war and fought the Ammonites, the children of Ammon. And then he, he, we spoke about that in the last chapter in Judges 11. And the thing is in this chapter, now the men of Ephraim want to come up against Jephetta. And he clearly says, When I asked you for help to fight the children of Am- Am- Ammon, you didn't do anything to help me. And he says, I asked for help. You turned your back on me. You said you would, you couldn't do it. You couldn't, couldn't assist. You couldn't. But now you want to come up against me. And you know you wrong. And he says, And when I saw that ye delivered me not in 12 and 3, And when I saw that ye delivered me not, I put my life in my hands and passed over against the children of Ammon. And the Lord delivered them into my hand. Wherefore then are ye come up unto me this day to fight against me? Then Jephetha gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim. And the men of Gilead smote Ephraim. Because they said, ye Gileadites are fugitives of Ephraim among the Ephraimites and among the Manassites. He says, you you won't dare for me. And now you want to come up against me and fight me. Now, how do that sound? He, Jephetha, decided to... Depend on God. When you feel alone and you feel when you ask for help and no one wants to help you, but now they want to come fight you, you know who to turn to, and that's God. A lot of experiences in our lives show us who we can depend on. This is so valuable for today's society. We can have all the friends in the world. We can have cousins. We can have nephews. We can have sisters, brothers. And you can ask them for help and they tell you no or no, I don't got it right now. Or 
or um, um, I'll give you an example. Say you starting a business, right? And you are, and you might need financial backing, or you might need help selling your products or your services. And you ask these particular people in your life, regards to family, cousins, friends, close associates, whatever. And you're asking them for help. And they say, no, I can't do nothing for you. But then when they see that you've had a victory of uh, planning, you're planning for your business, your business plan, your your marketing and advertising plan, your whatever, like if you want to go back to school or whatever the case may be, whatever you want to do, right? And you need help with it. And you ask for this help from the people around you and they say no and then all of a sudden they get jealous or they get envious of what you have accomplished by yourself and now they come up against you and you be like really like like you know in in a moment of clarity you get this understanding that you can't depend on nobody but God on the Lord because one excuse me you may feel alone you may feel abandoned in that moment you may feel like you have no one else to turn to but you know you got God and God got you and that's the moral of this chapter is Jephetha said Okay, cool. You don't want to help me? All right, all right, no problem, no problem, no problem, no problem. I got no problem with that. Okay, I'm going to keep doing what I'm going to do with just me and Jesus, me and God alone. And when people see that you are successful without them, sometimes they will come and fight you or get mad, jealous, envy, spread lies, um, Drag your name through the mud. Um, say, uh, tell all your business they think they know about. <clears throat> just to make you look bad because of your victories. And we can't get mad at them. But we can keep pushing forward and doing what we're doing with the help of God. Jephetha says, he says, okay, look, okay, <clears throat> now you want to fight me. He said, oh, let me go get my true road dogs. Let me go get my, 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 my people I know that's got my back. So Jephetha goes and get the men of Gilead, and they, they demolish, they put asunder, they destroy, they wipe out the men of Ephraim. And he goes on, lives his life. And in this passage, you have to learn how to keep moving forward. Regardless of what they say, regardless of how they act, how they come up against you, oh, let me tell you, I've had that in my life. I've had that in my life where I thought people had my back and I've asked them to do things for me. And it's like, no, uh uh-uh, no, I I don't got time. Um, You know, they made all these excuses. And then they want to come out a bag on me and spread lies, spread rumors, uh, they want they they wanted to talk people against me about what I was doing. Um, <clears throat> they bad mouthed me. They 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 showed me who they really are. And this comes into so much into passage when Maya Angelou says, "When people show you who they are, believe them." So. When you see people doing these things and you have asked them and you thought 
You could depend on them, and then they turn their back on you. Depend on God. You want to go back to school, but your family members don't want to take you to the class. You want to find another way. Catch the bus. Find another ride. Walk, even. You ain't got to walk. You, you ain't got to, you know, it's this, this quote of Martin Luther King. He says, I don't care if you got the, if you, if you, if you can't run, you can walk. If you can't walk, you crawl. But keep moving forward. <clears throat> and that's the thing with, you know, when God has placed an anointing on your life to accomplish a particular goal, sometimes you got to do it by yourself. We talked about that in the last chapter. About how Jephetha had family members and his, his, his you know, his, his, he was born out of wedlock to a harlot, a lady of the night, or a prostitute. He was born uh, in that lineage. And then his father goes marry, marries this other woman. And she has children by his father. And those children decide to throw Jephetha out the house because they feel like because of where, who he was born to, he didn't have a right to his father or his mother's house or their belongings or even live in the same house as them. So they throw him out and look at what happened to, to Jephetha. He conquers. He conquers regardless of what he's been through. He conquers anyway. See, when God has an anointing on your life, no one can put asunder what God has planned for you. Jephetha goes and lives his life to the fullest, and then he passes away, and Israel is still in bondage. They return, they they end up in bondage again with more a different person, a different leader, a different, you know, and, you know, uh, uh, Jephetha judges Israel six years, then dies. Jephetha the Gilead, Gileadite and was buried in one of the cities of Gilead. And after him, Abzan, Ab- then you got... Elon, then you got Abdon, then you have, you have these different leaders come in and rule over Israel. But, during the course of that, he has done his assignment. He's going to get his royal crown. He's going he could because he did what God asked him to do, and he stuck with God. He didn't stick with man. Sometimes we we can't get so caught up in what man want us to do. We have to listen to what God asking us to do. We might have to walk that that line alone. We have to walk it by ourselves. We have to do everything by ourselves. But with God, all things are possible. I want to give you that word this morning. No matter who turns their back on you, who talk about you, who scandalize your name, who threw you away, who abandoned you, uh, don't forget that God loves you. Don't forget that God loves you. God has you here on this earth for a purpose. And make God your priority in your life Regardless of what others do around you, say about you, regardless, keep God first. And and you will prosper in your journey as long as you keep God first, no matter what you do in your life. Okay? I want to thank you for listening to today's message of Judges 12, 1 through 15. And... Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. I want to thank you for listening. And you have 
a blessed day. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Okay, I just want to say thank you for your love and support of Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast. And thank you for listening to today's daily devotional. I am so happy to get back in the saddle again after a nice long hiatus vacation. And I wanted to really say, you know, enjoy life. Enjoy the life God's given you. Enjoy the things that he has brought, you know, has done for you and brought you through. And, you know, even though you you, you may have been down, if you, you look up, God is always there. God is always with you no matter what. Okay, everyone, I wanted to say I love you. And we will talk to each other tomorrow morning. Okay, for another episode of Daily Devotional. I want to thank you again, and y'all have a blessed day. Bye, babies.